What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets with Rob. How's everybody doing? Before I get started about why the Mets passed on Nolan Arenado, I want to thank everybody for your support. I hit 100 subscribers because of all of you guys, for the guys who, for everyone who supports me. I want to thank you guys for that. Thank you for the continued support. Hope you continue to support me. And don't forget, guys, if you like my video, if you like this video, please don't forget to press the like button at the bottom. And if you continue to like my videos and want to see more content, don't forget, guys, subscribe to my channel. You're going to enjoy. I guarantee that. Thank you so much, guys. All right, guys. So if you haven't heard already, I know most of you probably have, but the Colorado Rockies have traded Nolan Arenado to the St. Louis Cardinals for a few prospects and money. So with this deal that took place, the Rockies got basically nothing back. They got a couple of prospects. Great. But it, they weren't big time prospects that you would expect to get for somebody who, for that all-star type of player like Nolan Arenado. So what did the Rockies give up or get from the Cardinals? Well, the Rockies got a few players. It hasn't really been official with names yet, but at this moment, this is the, the players that names have been thrown about. Austin Gomber, John Torres, and Luke and Baker. Now, the only guy on this on that I just said is the, in the top 10 of the Cardinals system as a prospect. And he's at number nine, and that's John Torres. Gomber pitched a little bit for the Cardinals last year, pitched in 14 games, 186 ERA, pretty good. But again, for the caliber of player that the Cardinals are getting, they didn't really give anything to the Rockies. And oh, by the way, guys, the Colorado Rockies, get this, gave $50 million. They're sending $50 million to the St. Louis Cardinals. They're basically paying the Cardinals to take Nolan Arenado and his contract. Now, to me, that's completely insane. I don't even know what the Rockies are doing. I get they're trying to save payroll because they want to sign Trevor's story. But guys, I mean, Jesus, it, it's crazy. It's like some of these teams, I just don't, it, it, it boggles my mind with the whole thing with Nolan Arenado, the whole thing with Lindor. I know the Mets got Lindor, but again, look with Cleveland. Even Cleveland got a bigger haul back and Lindor only has one year left on his contract. Cleveland got more for Lindor. Then the Rockies did for Nolan Arenado. And Nolan Arenado is still in the contract for many years. So, again, to recap exactly what uh, what the Rockies got back, they got back Austin Gomer, John Torres, and Luke and Baker. And the Rockies sent $50 million to the St. Louis Cardinals for Nolan Arenado. So, let's get into the whole... Mets situation. Why did the Mets pass on Nolan Arenado? Well, you can say, uh, wow, they probably would have had to give up too much. The Mets didn't want to spend the money to bring in Nolan Arenado. Nolan Arenado is not great away from Coors Field. Okay, you can say all that. But what the Rockies, I'm sorry, what the Cardinals gave up for the Rockies is nothing. Why couldn't the Mets send to the Rockies low-level prospects to get Nolan Arenado? And the Rockies would have kicked in money anyway. So the Mets would have saved money in the $199 million left on Nolan Arenado's contract. So he would be getting $149 million from the Mets and $50 million from the Rockies. The Mets should have been in on this. It's not like we have an all-star at third base. Third base was a necessity. I know a lot of people like J.D. Davis. I like J.D. Davis. But J.D. Davis is not a really good defensive third baseman. And offensively, he cannot compare to Nolan Arenado. Away or at home. I w I'm not crazy, extremely mad that the Mets didn't go after Nolan Arenado. But maybe they did explore it and we didn't hear about it. 
but I really would have liked, I would rather get Nolan Arenado than probably get Trevor Bauer. That's my opinion. You can disagree. That's cool. But I really feel like Nolan Arenado was very, is an all-star. And I feel like he would make this team a lot better. No doubt defense, defensively. And I think he'll be fine at City Field. The reason why I say that is because we know Coors, Coors Field, how you know the thin air, the ball travels. They got one of the biggest outfields in baseball. So he's going to get a lot of balls going to drop. His average is going to be up there. He's going to hit better. It's just good. Yeah, okay, makes sense. But City Field is not a small ballpark. City Field outfield is pretty big compared to the standard of a lot of baseball, a lot of stadiums nowadays in Major League Baseball and the stadiums are the outfield is just not as big. And City Field has one of the bigger outfields. And what I want to go into a, um, with the Mets is that I'm going to show you the splits home and away with Nolan Arenado. And I think that's this is the biggest reason why I think the Mets passed on him. I don't think it was the cost because the cost is clearly low. The money was about $150 million or $149 million when the Rockies kicked in $50 million. So you minus $199 million from $50 million, get $149 million. So it wasn't that either. It wasn't the money. I really think the Mets looked at his stats and said, I don't think he would be good enough away from Coors Field to give that type of money or pay that type of money to Arenado over the next five to six years. And I'll read them to you right now. Home splits. 136, and this is his career. 136 home runs, 46, 461 RBIs, 322 average, and slugger percentage of 609. That's in 543 games at home. When you look at the away splits, that's his 536 games. So there's a good comparison here because – the games are very close together. Home runs, 99. RBIs, 299. Average, 263. And slugger percentage, 471. Now, every one of those stats are lower than at home. And the away is just not that good. 263 average, 471 slugging percentage, 99 home runs, 299 RBIs. He basically hit 40 plus home runs more at home. He has over 150 more RBIs at home. He bats 60 points, almost 60 points higher or 50 points higher average at home. And slugger percentage is almost 150 points higher. So I really think that's why the Mets did not go after Nolan Arenado. Could it have been a mistake? Could you? Isn't it a, a low risk, high rewards type of scenario with Nolan Arenado? If the Mets would have gave up what the Cardinals gave up, they gave up one player in their prospect pool that is in the top ten of their prospect list, and that is John Torres at number nine. Everybody else that they are giving up doesn't even break the top ten. So the Mets could have done this. It's a low risk, high reward. Yes, the money is high, but it's doable. The Mets could have had Nolan Arenado to patrol third base, one of the best defensive third basemen in the league at third base for the next five or six years. And there, and the Cardinals are even negotiating his opt-outs. So he's clearly not going to have opt-outs when he goes to St. Louis. So that's another incentive the Mets to be like, okay, well, if you get Aaron out, he can opt out. Well, you know what? They also gave up a lot more for Lindor on a one-year deal, and there's no guarantee that we will sign him. I think we will, but you just don't know. So you're taking a risk. But this risk here, I think you, the Mets could have took because there was a lot more that the Mets could have done to ensure that no, Arenado would not opt out, just like the St. Louis Cardinals are doing now. They're negotiating his opt-outs. So basically, he ain't going to have an opt-out. And it's a great negotiating tactic because you're guaranteed to have Nolan Arenado on your team for the next five or six years. And putting him with Goldschmidt, they're a dangerous team. And back to the Mets. 
there's not have there hasn't been a lot of movement at all. You know, we got the whole thing with Cohen with the whole Robin Hood issue and the, the stock market that went crazy the last couple of days that everybody's been talking about, who's amateur traders, big time traders, everybody's been talking about it. You got that, you had the whole thing with Jared Porter. It's just a lot of little things and not enough movement. And I'm starting to think, are the Mets really going to get Bauer? Uh, were the Mets ever involved in Nolan Arenado? I don't think they were at all. Maybe they made a quick phone call. But, like, if the Rockies knew what they were, they were they wanted to get, which was basically nothing for Nolan Arenado, and the kick in $50 million, if the Mets would have came up, called them, and said, hey, what are you looking for for Nolan, Ar- Nolan Arenado? And the Rockies would have said something of the same scenario of that package that the Cardinals gave. It's a no-brainer. It's a low-risk, high-reward type of trade. Lindor had a higher asking price than Nolan Arenado, and that's a one-year rental at the moment. So I, I don't. I really hope the Mets tried, and maybe the Rockies just didn't like the prospect pool of the Mets, and they liked it, the players that they got back from the Cardinals and that package, which I don't really see. I mean, the Mets could have even gave. You know, one of their top five prospects, if they really wanted to focus in and do everything they can to get Nolan Arenado. So clearly they didn't push hard enough or really look at that scenario at all with Nolan Arenado. They clearly probably focused on Bauer, Jackie Bradley Jr., possibly Chris Bryant, even though Chris Bryant rumors has slowed down you haven't really heard much in the in about a week. But I think the Mets lost out on a low-risk, high-reward type of scenario with Nolan Arenado. It would have been nice to have Nolan Arenado at third base. You could have even packaged J.D. Davis, who was not making a lot of money. What is he going to make uh, with arbitration? $2.5 million, if that. So J.D. Davis could have probably been in a deal so they had that third baseman that they could have put in for a couple million dollars in Colorado. And then he could have thrown in mid-level prospects. And you still would have got $50 million, like I said before, from the Rockies, which lowers the total contract to $149 million. I'm a little upset. I'm not overly upset about this situation. You know, it's another player that is coming to the National League that is in the NL Central. I get that. But we do face them. We will be facing the Cardinals. If they're good enough, we could possibly face them in the playoffs. And we got to face these guys. You know, there was never really a threat that the Rockies were making the playoffs every other year. Every year, and the Mets would have to face them. The Mets weren't making the playoffs either, but I feel like the Mets can make the playoffs in the coming years to come. 21, 22, 23, 24. Now we have to deal with face possibly facing the Cardinals in the playoffs and dealing with Nolan Arenado. So it really is frustrating, I guess you can say, that the Mets really either didn't push, didn't call, or just flat out just didn't want Nolan Arenado because of his home and away splits. So to recap, guys, the St. Louis Cardinals made a deal for Nolan Arenado for a couple of prospects, Austin Gomer, Lucan Baker and John Torres, those players haven't been official yet, but that's probably the players that are going back to the Rockies, and the Rockies are kicking in $50 million to the St. Louis Cardinals. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to press the like button, and if you like my content and my videos, guys, please don't forget to subscribe, and I want to thank everybody. I hit the 100 subscriber mark. I want to thank you guys for your support. I couldn't do it without you, and let's go Mets.